<laughs> okay, I'm here to talk smut. Yesterday I had gone out and started a video at a local 10 acre blueberry farm. The water, that the rain that we'd received um, just really killed their season. So I didn't do too much picking. The berries weren't sweet. Most of them had hit the ground, exploded from taking on too much water. So I did a cooking experiment with the smut. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. And now I've got kind of a smutty addiction, AKA Mexican truffles. These things are fabulous. And I'm gonna uh, run you through really quick all of the tips that um, since collecting for a few days now that I've come across. This is an older one. It, uh, it got wet and slimy and now it's dried out. This I'm ignoring. When I shuck the corn, there's a lot more insects with this collection method, just, you know, taking them. If you have a big field and you want to collect the smut, the easiest and cleanest way I found was to just go through and pull it back just a wee bit to expose the, the smut. And they just wiggle out. So you don't have to deal with a lot of bugs or plant material. So I've been collecting them like this for the last couple days. And I'm going to write in the description box the little bit of research that I've done on it about its, you know, its, its uses in culinary applications. The agroeconomist, well, agriculturists and farmers were trying to eradicate it. And there are certain varieties like the silver queen corn that's more susceptible to the fungus. It's considered a parasitic fungus. What happens is, is it goes in and at a critical time during the pollination, it invades the corn and takes over its growth. So um, these little galls, as they call them, are really nice to work with when it starts to get opened up like the first cob that I showed you. Uh, it can be slimy and bug ridden. But anyway, it turns out that this parasitic fungus has the ability to synthesize uh, essential amino acid that our body needs and can't produce on its own, nor is it present in the corn. So by it invading this corn, it's actually making it more nutritious for us. You just have to get past the color and the look of it. It tastes like earthy. It's, it's, it's a fungus, it's like a mushroom. And I made it as a taco filling. I did a smut mac and cheese. I'm gonna try it on pizza, chili, any place that you would enjoy a mushroom type flavor, you could go ahead and do it. Now what I did was I, um, I caramelized some onions. Oh, this is gorgeous. I can't believe I missed this one. Um, it's kind of like that person that you date it. You know, when you first saw them, they weren't that good looking, but the more you get to know them, the more you think that they're beautiful. And this is exactly what's happening to me with the smut. <laughs> I was like, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, gross. But this is absolutely, that's wonderful. There we go. So in a pan, I add a little bit of uh, onions and I caramelize those. So that means just a slow cook with salt, no water, no oil. And I got those nice and colored so they'll be tasty. And then I added some tomatoes and pepper, a little bit of oil, a little bit of water, and then minced up the smut and and cooked it all together. I have so much of it that I ended up pre-cooking it with some of the corn kernels that came off when I was doing the whole 
the whole cob and I'm gonna freeze it. I have it in little sandwich bags and I'm also going to freeze some of the galls so I could have it through the winter. They said traditionally it is consumed fresh. You can, some people do freeze it and from gourmet places you could find it in a can but I've heard that it's disappointing. So there you have it. There's my review on, uh, review on smut. If you could get to a field and have access to it, I say the best way is to pick them individual. But if not, if it's a one-time shot, then of course take the cob. Do it outside. It's really messy. There are going to be, you know, some little bugs. I have little black bugs. I don't, didn't identify them coming out of it. And of course your typical little caterpillar warm things inside, you know, just enjoying the corn feast. So I'm going to do some videos from Charleston next week. I'm going to go visit some gardens and go on some excursions. So that'll be fun. I hope you're well and enjoying your weekend. Love and peace.